Hey, I'm back. And today I want to talk to you guys about chargers. As you know, 36 volt batteries are plentiful out there. Uh, the scooter batteries, uh, to be more specific, right? And so as a result of that, we've made a bunch of little battery packs using them. You know, anything from like a couple of little packs, single pack or a couple of little packs, all the way to like a hundred, right? So like 10, 40, well, the last one was 46 kilowatt hours. Uh, using a hundred of these uh, scooter packs, right? So as a result of that, we need a charger, a 36 volt charger. They're not really problematic to get, but they're kind of expensive or, you know, I found a way to make them cheaper. Okay, on Amazon, if you type in a 36 volt charger, well, uh, a bunch of them come up and these are good. I've actually used them. I used these to charge our forklift. We use these to charge a bunch of our batteries. And uh, one of the issues here is that they, these are made for lead acid. They do have some that are made for lithium ion, but it's hard to find them here on Amazon. You have to go to AliExpress and then you have to wait a long time to get them, right? So e these work, no problem. I mean, even if they do have the thing to they overcharge, slightly overcharge the lithium ion uh, uh, cobalt oxide batteries, our, those scooter batteries have a built-in BMS, so no problem, it'll save you, right? But look at the prices though, for an 18 amp, right slightly over like maybe 600 watts 297 that's 300 bucks for that one uh this one 267 is a little bit slightly off i have that exact same one and i've used it in fact but you know what it stopped working after a while so uh here's another one for 289 but you couldn't find uh a cheaper one let's see so this is a five amp one where is it at? I do, okay, this one right here. I actually have this and I'm using it. That's only $159, $160, right? Uh, that seems to be working okay. It's like no no brand uh, compared to that or whatever. Uh, everything else is like, yeah. So everything's above 160 all the way to $300. Uh, that's what you'll get, right? But what if I can tell you uh, or show you a way to make a cheaper one or something that maybe you can get for like 100 20 bucks right, so let me show you how we can diy something that is slightly better and is slightly cheaper right all right this right here is my 500 watt charger that i have built and now at this point i've tested it i've shown a little bits and pieces here for you guys uh, either on my facebook or on instagram i don't remember where i showed this right but one of my socials and I've been testing this, you know, we've been designing it, redesigning it, you know, I got the things a little bit off, a little bit wrong. Um, and it's finally here. This, I tested it last week. I charged a 46 kilowatt hour battery pack with this charger right here, 500 watts. It took a long time, right? Cause it's a small charger, 500 watts, but it did it. And the reason I wanted to test that, it was to see if we can keep the internal parts cool enough to run for you know i don't know 48 uh, uh hours right uh non-stop right continuously and it did it and so now that i it passed that test well i'd say now it's it's ready for prime time I'm, i can show you how to make this and i can show you uh how to save some money right so before i showed you that let's let me take it apart so you can see the insides oh, i think i did oh no oh yes i did okay so this is the side. I put a piece of tape so there is not bouncing around. Um, and here's the charger, you see? What I did was put eight or four of these chargers um, on the top plate and on the bottom plate. And I connected them all in parallel, right? The problem with these is that these are designed to work without a fan and they just radiate heat. And so when you put a bunch of these fans in a box like this, well, they tend to overheat and don't, they shut down, right? And so that was what was happening. My first generation, my very first attempt at doing this, that is what happened. But here, what I did was I added a DC to DC to go from 43 volts or the 42 volts that these put out and then go down to 12 volts. And then in between the DC to DC and a 12 volt fan here, I put a 92 millimeter fan, right? 
but I, I didn't want this to always be running because the, the, the way that these are gonna work is that you are going to plug it into your battery, right? And it's always gonna be plugged into your battery. So that means the DC bus side of these is always gonna have voltage. And so I didn't want this fan to just keep continuously running 24 seven, right? Because then this thing is gonna eventually die. You only want the fan to run when the charger needs cooling. And so what I did, I just put a thermal switch in there. Uh, and I just squeeze that switch in between. You can see it right there. You can, I s squeeze that switch in between the chargers. And when the chargers start working, the fan doesn't kick in right away. It's only until it reaches a certain amount of te temperature, then it kicks in. And you can adjust the speed by adjusting the voltage of the uh, DC to DC, right? And so, therefore, this is kind of like my first product that is designed and made i mean yes i'm just using off the shelf chargers and connecting them in, in in parallel and i know what people are gonna say some people are gonna say like well that's not the way you do this you use dedicated you know uh components why are you just using you know chargers that are designed to run on their own and paralleling them and you know that's dumb that's a dumb uh way to think because everybody uses parallel stuff right i mean chargers use parallel uh mosfets right uh most electronics uh, high, that have high performance or high current or whatever they use some kind of paralleling unless they go to like this big giant you know igbt modules right um but trend you know putting stuff uh, running stuff in parallel it's a thing that tesla does right their chargers i just i just got some superchargers in-house and uh when i'm looking in there oh they just use 12 of the car chargers <laughs> right and all they do is they just run them in parallel that's how they can get to 120 kilowatt right by paralleling a bunch of them so there's no different what i'm doing here except maybe i'm not using any kind of logic to control the chargers in between because these are very simple they're made uh, they're high quality because these were the ones that were made by the manufacturer of all these batteries and of all these scooters, right? So these are name brand. So Ninebot makes that ES4 scooter and this charger is the one that they built and they ship with this uh, scooter. And we have, I think I bought like 30,000 of these, right? So there's a lot of them that I have because I have a lot of these batteries, right? But then the thing becomes like, do you want to plug in a bunch of little chargers? And it becomes a giant mess. Look at this picture right here. Yeah, so if you wanted to put eight chargers uh, separate, right, you'd have to mess around with all those connections and all this stuff. The, all that fits inside, neatly inside that box and all the wiring gets done in that PCB board, right? So this is a much better way to do that. Let's look at the, how the board is laid out uh, and then how you can order those PCBs. By the way, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. Submit your designs to their website here and then you have all kinds of choices to do all kinds of thickness of boards. Uh, you can even do like these flexible ones, right? Different weights and copper size. Uh, they have a bunch of options in the colors and they have fast shipping. Check them out if you are gonna design or order some PCBs, PCB Way is the way to go. Thank you for sponsoring PCB Way, my channel. Let's move on to this design. Okay, so let's look at this board. It's actually pretty, pretty simple. It just goes and connects the main black AC lines coming in to individual black uh, and white, right? Positive and that's not positive, it's neutral and uh, line and neutral to the inputs here, right? No, of course, these are high AC, right? High voltage AC lines. So they can't really, you can't have anything going to the other side of the board because then, uh, well, you could you could get electrocuted, right? So what we do here is put some of these surfaces to be exposed so that we can solder the cables right into them, right? But without any holes, right? So let me show you the 3D uh, render here. So you see it here. Right, uh, that's the same copper line uh, that is coming in here, is going around, and then it's connecting all these blacks together. Um, and then the white one does the same thing. It goes through the front here. And then these other two paths right here are so that you can connect parallel 
the other board. This is gonna be the bottom plate and then there's gonna be a top plate and it's gonna be identical to this. So these are to connect one and one. And so then you can just connect a single input, right? Cord in here, you um, you can put it in here. And this little thing here is for uh, uh, some surface mount M4 terminal uh, little things that you can solder in here. Those are not 100% needed, but you can do it if you want to do it, right? Uh, other than that, let's see, let's go back to the main thing. Oh yeah, we have to put in our little uh, sponsor, project sponsor by PCB Way, right? Because they are the ones that sponsor this video. So then the other thing is the uh, output. Oh, so this is just a uh, copper plate. And it's just there because I figure that it's probably easier you know, the manufacturer has to put it on and then they have to put the solution that then just eats away all of these areas without copper. So it's just easier, I think, for them if you just leave that copper. That, this copper's doing nothing in here, just added, adding strength to uh, this plate, right? Right, because they're already putting that layer and then they have to remove it. So the less they have to remove, probably the quicker they can make that board, probably the cheaper that it costs to manufacture. And so why remove all these copper that goes in here without, that doesn't affect anything. It just adds strength and thickness to this board, right? So that's why we're doing it like that. But then here are the copper layers that are actually gonna be electrified. And this is the same thing, same concept, nothing going to the other side because these are uh, 36 volts uh, nominal um, DC bus, right? And then here, uh, this is where I have the DC to DC going in and then uh, the fan lines going out and I have one in here on this side and then another, th those two same lines travel all the way to this other side, just in case you wanna put two fans, one in the front, one in the back or one on this side, one on that side so you can push and pull uh, stuff. I don't know, it's not needed. Maybe if you're, you're gonna use this in a super hot environment uh, that a single fan will not be able to do it, then maybe putting two fans will be able and so now you'll be able to do it by having this here right so let's look at the thing so let's regenerate that by the way because now then it's gonna have the thing let's see the last changes that we made there we go so now we have the pcb way and then on this side i just put some branding in there i need to probably put the 500 watt 36 volt thing in there uh, I even put my face in there just because I was trying, I was testing just to see what kind of images you can transfer into this thing, right? So there it is. That is the main board. And then the sides and the front and back of these don't have any electrical traces. They're basically just to be made uh, just the structural, right? Just to basically cover these chargers and this device inside of a box. Uh, I know I've been playing around with this concept for a long time and this is the first time that I'm gonna be able to do it and use it. And so there we go. We got our thing. Now, all right, if you're familiar with my, uh, this kind of projects that I do, what I do this, I do it in faces, right? So. I'm gonna finish the the designs, the boards. I'm submit them to PCB Way, and then you could just go and order them, and I'll give you all the links of all the parts where to order them, so you can make this thing yourself. You remember, I promote DIY, and so I will give you all the tools and all the designs and all my work that I do, so that you can just do it yourself, right? And you can save some money because then that way you don't have to pay me or my guys, you know, to fumble around with this stuff, right? But if you're the kind of person that just wants to buy the board, well, I eventually will order these boards and in a few weeks, I will get all these things, you know, the DC to DCs, the fans, uh, the boards themselves, and then I'll have someone here in-house to put them together, solder them together, and then we'll put them into nice little finished product that then you can just order and buy on my website, Jack35, right? But at the core of this, this is an open source, DIY project and so then you can just order it. If you want to order these parts, the links are going to be in the description of this video and you can order the boards yourself. You don't have to order them for PCB way, way by the way, but uh, you would be helping my sponsor of this video if you do. So I would appreciate that very much, right? But you can, be, you'll be able to download the Gerber files and then you can order them anywhere you want. Uh, okay, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. I have a bunch of these projects coming up. Uh, there are different, they're all 
based on DIY batteries of all kinds, shapes and sizes. Uh, and yeah, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, then consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. And I will appreciate you forever for that. And I will see you in the next one. All right, bye, we'll see you.